I've come to the wide open fields of Werribee, just outside Melbourne. A flock of strange looking contraptions takes flight. They resemble an airborne billy cart, and any sensible person knows that billy carts shouldn't fly. But these aerochutes certainly do. Just. Normally, as a biologist, I study swarms of animals. But here today, I'm in the midst of my own swarm. If you can ignore the fear and general sense of wrongness, they do give a great view. On the fringes of our fastest growing city, I can see another booming population. Werribee is home to 11,000 hectares of wetlands protected by international law. Look at the concentrations of birds on that pond. The big flock of white birds are mainly whiskered terns. They've come in from inland Australia. I've taken to the air with ecologist Richard Loyne. It's the first time he's seen wetlands from up here, on the seat of his pants. I once flew over in a jet plane, but never in a little seat like this. This is really good fun. <laughs> Each year, Hundreds of thousands of birds migrate from across the globe to this oasis. About 40 species of shorebird visit this area from Arctic Siberia and Alaska. And if you spent a winter in Arctic Siberia or Alaska, you'd know why they don't stay there over winter. That's a, that's a pretty spectacular flock of ducks over there, Richard. Yes, Steve, they're another inland breeding bird that's come here in large numbers. A few weeks ago, there were hardly any here, and now we have counted over 50,000. These are world-renowned wetlands. But what's surprising is the source of the attraction. Look down below, Steve, you can see the reason that all these birds are here. This is Melbourne's effluent. Werribee's giant sewerage treatment plant churns through hundreds of millions of litres of waste each year. Until recently, nutrient-rich water flowed from lagoons onto porous fields, creating a bountiful habitat for birds. It's hard to imagine, but with exceptional foresight, our forebears designed it this way more than a century ago. The main value of this place is as a drought refuge, and over the last decade of drought, it's regularly supported well over 100,000 water birds and really helped them survive in a period when there were very few wetlands available for them anywhere in this part of Australia. So Richard, in many ways then, this area is an oasis, and that oasis is fueled by the effluent of Melbourne. That's right, and it's very good to be able to see that the products of the city are actually being able to be put to use to actually help a conservation purpose. The plant processes 65,000 litres of waste every hour. After 35 days, it's so clear it's either recycled or released into Port Phillip Bay. So without the water treatment plant, would this world listed wetland and ornithological hotspot be here, Richard? Not in its present form, it wouldn't. There's no doubt that these artificial habitats that have been added have greatly enhanced the value of the whole system. As our population grows and grows and our cities spread, typically we degrade and detract from our natural environment. Here in Werribee, by contrast, we're passing a little back. About two and a half thousand tons of it every day. 